I'm Mohamed Chinara. In today's video, we will be reviewing the neuroanatomy of the brain and midline neuroanatomical structures. Here are two images from the same patient's CT examination. On the left of your screen, you have an axial slice through the level of the mid vault, sort of here. This is a coronal slice, and you should look at this as if the patient was looking out the screen towards you. You can see on the coronal slice that this is the folk cerebri. It splits into a right tentorial leaflet and a left tentorial leaflet. As a result of these meningeal reflections, you are left with an infratentorial brain and a supratentorial brain. The Fox divides the supratentorial brain into the left cerebral hemisphere and the right cerebral hemisphere. The infratentorial brain comprises the left cerebellar hemisphere, right cerebellar hemisphere, and brainstem. Here is, as we said, a slide much further down at the level of the skull base. You can just see the superior aspect of both orbits partially included. This scan nicely demonstrates the anterior cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa, and the posterior fossa. The anterior cranial fossa is just about showing you the inferior aspect of both frontal lobes. Here you see the right temporal lobe and the left temporal lobe. This is the pituitary gland. In the posterior fossa, you can see the right cerebellar hemisphere, left cerebellar hemisphere, and the brainstem. This is a sagittal T1 weighted sequence, which we have also talked through on the CSF spaces. If you haven't yet watched that video, you can watch that either before or after this. This here is the corpus callosum, beautifully demonstrated, and it's a white matter channeling structure to help both cerebral hemispheres communicate. You can see the cerebellum indicated here. Here is the aqueduct of Sylvius or cerebral aqueduct opening up into this fourth ventricle. This entire structure here is the brainstem, but we can further subdivide it into the midbrain, which has its hummingbird type appearance here, the pons located anteriorly, and the medulla oblongata located inferiorly. The cervical spinal cord is indicated here. The hypothalamus is located in this region, but it's very difficult to directly delineate on MR imaging. If we move slightly off the midline, you'll see the pituitary gland, located within the pituitary fossa, located just above the sphenoid sinus. The sphenoid sinus appears dark black on these sequences because it's full of gas. Just for interest, this is the tongue, and here is the cervical vertebrae. This is a coronal MRI slice, and you should look at this as if the patient is looking out the screen towards you. So this would be the patient's left temporal lobe and the right temporal lobe. The reason we've included this slice is to demonstrate the optic chiasm, which you can see here. Just below the optic chiasm, you can see the infundibulum or the pituitary stalk. And here is the pituitary gland, again located above the gas-filled sphenoid sinus. The optic chiasm is far better demonstrated on a dynamic sequence. And I'll show you this now. There's the left orbit and there's the right. Let's trace the left optic nerve. If you follow my arrow, we'll trace it as it heads into the intracranial space. Here is the left optic nerve heading towards the orbital apex, and it's now just about to traverse the optic canal. And as it does so, it forms a left optic nerve. And here you see the union of the left and right optic nerves to form the optic chiasm. There's the infundibulum, and there's the pituitary. The optic chiasm splits into the left optic tract and the right optic tract which heads posteriorly via a number of intermediate structures to the visual cortex located in the occipital lobe. Take your time to scroll through this video to get a better understanding yourself of the anatomy, course and related structures. Thanks for watching. I trust this was useful for you. 
please get in touch if you have any further or specific queries.